This is a video I have been wanting to make for the longest time. As everyone should know, Dark Souls is a huge part of my life. I have been playing the game since a young age, they have inspired me to make content in the first place, and I always find myself coming back to the franchise. But what game started my obsession with it? Which game finally made me realize that this series has something special? What game clicked? For me, it has to be Dark Souls 3. Quite possibly one of the most influential games I have ever played. Hello everybody, I'm Neem. This is what it means to me, Dark Souls 3. When I was 10 years old, I really started to develop my own taste in video games. My brother has always had this huge collection of games, so I would play basically anything he owned. This included weird third-party license games, games that were not very good, but little me had no idea that were mediocre, but he had some really good games too. Spyro, Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter, a ton of classics, Donkey Kong 1, Donkey Kong 2, Donkey Kong 3, some of my favorite games of all time. But 2016 and 2017 are unanimously agreed to be some of the best years of gaming. And what released in 2016? Dark Souls 3. Also The Last Guardian, which is another underrated gem, but that's for another day. I was always aware of Dark Souls. I watched my brother play the first one and a bit of the second one, but this game was brand new to me. The moment my brother and I saw it on the shelf of the GameStop for 50% off, I was infatuated. I put this game into my brother's PS4 and I was instantly immersed and in love with this game. The world is so dreary and so beautiful and tells a story that I didn't get at the time. The bosses were whooping my ass to no end. I got that feeling of ecstasy when clearing an obstacle. Ten-year-old me experienced all this and more when I played this game, and to this day, no game has given me the feeling I experienced when I first played Dark Souls 3. The first Souls game will always be your favorite, always your most cherished. Your most memorable moments in the franchise should come from that game, and I'm no different. Dark Souls 3 is very impactful. See, as a kid, I was very socially awkward. I was homeschooled too, which contributed that a little bit. I did socialize. I was in some extracurricular classes that gave me some social interaction. One of these classes was theater, an acting program where you would meet a variety of other students, get to know each other, and then perform in a play together. Because of Dark Souls 3 and the Souls series in general, I became friends with this guy one day in class. I mean, super close friends. We pretty much connected instantly. We shared three things in common. Our brothers and ourselves loving the Soul series, an enjoyment of YouTube, and being homeschooled. Now our classes were once a week on Mondays, so next week he gave me his number, I called him, and since then he and I were best friends. We would talk constantly, every day on the phone, I would visit his house somewhat frequently. We would basically do everything together. The fact of the matter is that he was my best friend, and if it wasn't for Dark Souls, he and I might not have even talked to each other and got along as well as we did. We talked about Dark Souls a lot, our love for the series, the things we hated about it. We played it together, and to this day, some of my most cherished memories come from us playing Dark Souls and talking about it for hours on end. Like I said previously, this inspired me and my friend to create our own videos. We tried to make let's plays, gaming videos, vlog type videos, sketch comedy, the whole nine yards, and while few things did come into fruition, what matters most is the memories that I associate with him and the Souls series. Dark Souls, especially 3, plays as a time capsule for that period of my life. It felt like I was growing up a bit. I finally had a friend, which was nothing I really ever had before then. It and other people sparked my interest in content creation and inspired my whole dream, a career of being a YouTuber, which isn't really my dream anymore, but that is how influential this game is to me. It's done so much more than be a video game for me, and it inspired me, and it has gotten me through so much. So I think it's time to drop the sentimental stuff and finally talk about this game. Dark Souls 3 begins with the fire fading. Dark Souls has always been about something called the First Flame. The flame is basically what keeps the world of Dark Souls alive, revolving, and even while this flame is still alive, the world is still depressing, bleak, and grim. Whatever you can call it. So imagine what this world is going to be when the fire finally begins to fade. 
That is Dark Souls 3's purpose, to show you that this world is ending, and you must either restore it, continuing another hopeless cycle, or to let it fade with everyone and everything that resides in it. This game is supposed to be the end of Dark Souls, and I think it does its job perfectly. From the moment you're thrusted into this world, everything is gray, and no, I'm not kidding, there is an immense lack of color in this world, almost no life to be seen anywhere, aside from a few enemies that you need to kill. The tone of this game is set perfectly from the get-go, and it only elevates as you progress through the game. After fighting a boss, you enter Firelink Shrine, only this isn't the Firelink Shrine you may remember. It's covered in ash, it's so dark here, where's all the life? Obviously, this isn't a Firelink Shrine from the first game, rather a bleak representation of it. It's a Firelink Shrine where everything has been drained from it. Firelink Shrine is a calm place with beautiful scenery. This Firelink Shrine is a grim hideout for the few sane people in this world. This Firelink Shrine does not feel connected to this world either. Rather, it is its own corner of the universe, isolated from everything else. Which is apparent since the only means of getting to the main meat of the game is teleporting from Firelink Shrine. So this place is literally just isolated from everything else. You can find a variety of references here to Dark Souls, whether it is Andre, the discovery of Patches, a tree giant from Dark Souls 2, or Artorius's armor. This is truly a tribute to Firelink Shrine. Now, believe it or not, this is something a lot of people complain about. I've heard many statements along the lines of Dark Souls 3 is just fan service, and while there is a lot of fan service in this game, I don't think it is as heinous as people really make it out to be. This game is supposed to be the end of all things that Dark Souls has built. It makes sense for there to be plenty of references and callbacks because, hey, this is the last game in the franchise, and everything in this series is connected whether it is obvious or cryptic. Yes, it can be a bit much. It does feel like this game is saying, hey, do you remember this from Dark Souls? Isn't that so cool? But for the most part, I think it is generally unoffensive. Personally, I enjoy all the references and callbacks, especially finding the OG Firelink Shrine in the Ring City DLC. It just makes sense to me, and I like to think that this is the Ashen One going through and discovering every detail of his ancestors. There's a popular theory that each protagonist in Dark Souls is connected in some shape or form, and I like this theory a lot. I always have, and with the context of Dark Souls 3's many references, I believe it makes a lot of sense. Another theory is that the final boss of this game is a manifestation of every Souls protagonist before you, which I think is just cool. And once again, it makes sense given the context of the game. Everything crafted in this game feels immaculate to me. The environments, the story, the gameplay, the exploration, everything I can possibly think of. The environments of this game are very solemn and desolate. While there is life occupying all of these areas, this life feels well, to put it simply and harshly, worthless. Everything here feels like it wants to die, it wants the world to end, it wants to stop suffering, and I love it. I love when games provide a storyline, a narrative that is supposed to be more dreadful. I love when games don't necessarily have a happy ending, and Dark Souls 3 is the epitome of that. Areas like Fair and Keep, Profane Capital, Irithal Dungeon, and Smoldering Lake feel like they exist to make you feel hopeless and to recognize how much of this world has really gone to waste. It's perfect, and while some areas aren't the most enjoyable to navigate, they are all lovely in their own way when you consider the context of this game. I am a huge guy for context in games. I don't care if some parts of the game is unenjoyable, is rather unpleasant to go through, but if the context makes sense, I can glance past that. Even an area like Irithal that is supposed to be beautiful looks like it is about to collapse from the disparity of this world. Everything is so ugly, but in a good way, oddly enough. As I mentioned a moment ago, some of these areas aren't the most enjoyable to navigate through or to look at. Irithal Dungeon, Fair and Keep, Catacombs, realistically, I think in terms of how Dark Souls 3 feels, most areas are subpar at best. This game has the most okay entries in the series as far as areas go. 
I think even the worst areas in this game are miles better than any of the worst areas in Dark Souls 1 and 2. And most of these areas aren't necessarily bad, just... Eh, could be better. My main point against Dark Souls 3 is the linearity. Most people believe that the linearity of this game does not contribute in its favor. Which I believe it could contribute to some areas that I don't really enjoy. But I believe that the linear nature of this game does work in its favor. Due to the linear style, I argue this game is the Souls game with the most replayability. Replayability is a huge thing in the Souls franchise. No run will exactly be the same, and it's fun getting into the semantics of min-maxing a character, planning out what you need for said character. It's satisfying taking in all of the knowledge you gain in one run and applying it to another. The linearity makes areas quick, easy, fun, and the whole game is one of the easier ones to pick up. Again, I enjoy it. But if there is one thing that the linearity does that harms the game, it has to be the progression of your build. Since there are multiple paths to get to one destination, you'll often find yourself not being able to progress in your build. Here, let me show you an example. Okay, so let's say you want to be a sage character, right? Okay, so you start here. You start here every run, and to be a sage character, you, of course, need magic. So... You go to Firelink Shrine, there's really nothing there for you aside from Fair and Dart, which is one of the quote-unquote worst spells. Okay, so after that, you eliminate that, you can't get to Kiln with the First Flame until the end of the game. That is the in-game area. So, you're in Firelink Shrine, you can only go to High Wall of Lothric. Well, High Wall of Lothric has some options. You can either go to the Consumed King's Garden and the Untended Graves for some extra stuff, or Lothric Castle and Grand Archives. However, these both of these areas are a little too hard for your typical beginner player and maybe even intermediate player, okay? So, and there's also really nothing here aside from Lothar Castle and Grain Archives. So you could go through Lothar Castle and Grain Archives, but the item you need, which is the Sorcerer's Tome, you can't get it until you go to this place right here. Okay, so that immediately eliminates any of these, and you can't find something here, so there's nothing here. Now you'll get to Road of Sacrifice, and you can finally find something. You can finally find a spell tome and get some better spells as a sorcerer, okay? So there's something here you can get, but there's nothing here, like, at all. So you go to Fair and Keep, Catacombs, and you can either go to Smoldering Lake or Irithyll. Smoldering Lake offers nothing for a sorcerer as well. So you're in Boreal Valley. Now, Honor Londo has some stuff, so you could go there. But then you want to go to Irithyll Dungeon. Okay, Irithyll Dungeon also doesn't have that much stuff, okay? So what you got to do is you got to kill this Lord Soul. This Lord's Soul, ult the one right here too, and ult the other one here, which you killed earlier, okay? I hope this isn't getting confusing. And then after all of that, you can finally head to the High Wall of Lothric, to Lothric Castle, to the Grand Archives, to finally get some new spells as a sorcerer. I hope this example isn't too confusing, but it probably is. But aside from stuff like this, I genuinely see little issue with the linearity, but that's just me. I can see why you wouldn't like it. The previous Souls games were not nearly as linear, but they all followed the same general linear progression, I believe. While there are many open ends in Dark Souls 1 and 2 alike, every Souls game progresses rather the same. I think they made Dark Souls 3 more closed off due to time constraints and making the game more player accessible, and you can argue whether that is heresy or not, but I personally don't mind it. The linear progression makes Dark Souls 3 feel more like a boss rush, and the fact that Dark Souls 3 has arguably some of the best bosses in the series, I think this benefits the game greatly. Even the first boss in the game is great. Udex Gundir teaches you everything you need to know. He demonstrates to you that this game is not going to play like the other Souls games at all. Compared to all other Souls titles, combat is very fast. Everything has been changed from your rolling, attacks, heavy attacks, and spell casting. Nothing is the same in this game. There has been a complete overhaul in combat, 
And I believe Dark Souls 3 has the best combat in any From Software game that isn't Sekiro. Everything feels so smooth and satisfying to control. Seriously, nothing in this game feels weird. I honestly believe this might be the most perfect feeling game when it comes how to feel. Like, how it actually feels to play. I don't know how to put it. While previous Souls games feel clunky and outdated and slow, this game feels amazing even seven years later. I argue that this game feels better than Elden Ring, but who, uh, who am I kidding? It isn't hard to be better than Elden Ring. One of my favorite things about Dark Souls 3 is the boss fights. The boss fights feel so good. Every boss fight feels intricate and unique in their own way. Even bosses that aren't the best, such as Curse Rod and Greatwood, have something interesting up their sleeve to keep you coming back to those fights. I don't think there's truly a bad boss in Dark Souls 3, it just boils down to some are better than others. The DLCs have amazing boss fights such as Gale and Freed, two of my favorite boss fights in the whole series. And the main game has bosses like the Abyss Watchers, Pontiff Sullivan, Nameless King, Lothic and Lorien, and the Soul of Cinder. I vividly remember having my ass handed to me when I first played Dark Souls 3. Ten year old me almost cried when I finally beat the Abyss Watchers, and that is what made Dark Souls 3 so good to me. It could just be because it was my first Souls game, but I feel like this game out of any of them made me feel the most accomplished with whatever I did. Whether it was finding a weapon or vanquishing a boss after hours, I felt amazing through and through, no matter the situation. And it feels amazing today knowing that I can kill most of these bosses in a single attempt. Bosses that once took me hours take minutes to kill now. It's very gratifying. While the whole series demonstrates this, I feel like it is best in Dark Souls 3. It does an amazing job at making you feel like you're getting better through all of the decay and filth in this game. You're still trudging through this world and accomplishing so much. And I love that. Similar to Twilight Princess, Dark Souls 3 is about change. Finally letting things go, letting things in, letting go of something that is dying or dead already. While Twilight Princess, in my personal opinion, is about growing up and letting certain things behind, Dark Souls 3 is just letting things go completely, moving on, realizing that things can't last forever, and I think that is very valuable. That's a very valuable lesson. Things constantly change, and it comes to a point where you just have to accept it. That guy I was best friends with, we are no longer that close, and I have come to accept it. And one of the reasons is because of the lesson that this game teaches. Things change, for better or for worse, and sometimes you just have to let it happen. Or put it to an end yourself, to better yourself, or other people, or just your life in general. I think that is what the Souls games are all about, demonstrating change and how you can overcome anything that comes your way. Dark Souls 3 is the perfect way to end the Souls franchise. I wouldn't have it any other way, so yeah. Thank you, Dark Souls, and thank you, Dark Souls 3. I'm not really sure how to end this video because there's so much I want to say about Dark Souls 3, yet I can't really find the words for it. This game is just so impactful, so meaningful, so beautiful the beautiful decay of it all i love it as someone who loves english as someone who loves literature narrative storytelling you know whether it's in a book whether it's in a game whether it's in a movie i love that stuff i love finding meanings in games finding meanings in certain things and dark souls 3 it's just one of my favorites because of that from a meaning storytelling you know, message, whatever standpoint. I love it. I adore it. It's one of the best games ever in that regard. And I highly recommend everyone at least check this game out. Listen to some more videos or something. I love this game. It'll always be one of my favorite games of all time. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to... You know, like the video, comment, get the algorithm going. I'm very proud of this video. 
uh, I'd like to have a lot of people see it because I'm very passionate about this game. I'm very passionate about what I do. So it would mean a lot to me. And I hope everyone who watched this video has a good day, night, evening, whatever. See ya.